All right, today, guys, we're going to be talking about the properties of exponents. This right here, this table, is going to be very important for you to put in your journal at some point in time. That would be a good time to pause the video. To be able to do it, you can zoom in and look at it. All right, well, we're going to start with problem number one. So right now, we're going to look at problem number one. And it says t to the power of 9 times t to the negative 8 power. Before we do it, don't tell me the answer, but before we do it, what property, bless you, what property is being used? Yes. Nope, just, just the product. Property. Alright? So right here, the product of house. Very good. Product of house. Right? Product of house. In your journal. So this means if I have a number to the power of n times a number to the power of n, this number right here is referred to as the base that you're working with. Alright? So we have the same base, right? What's our base? In this problem, the base is t. The n and the m represent exponents. I don't know what they represent. They represent the exponents. If you have the product of powers, all you have to do equals whatever your base is, just take the exponent and simply add them together. That's all you have to do. So right here, we could say this is equal to t to the power of 9 plus a negative 8. T to the first, which is just simply t. So our answer is t. Now that is using the concept of the product of powers where you simply just take the powers in, add them together. Now, there's another concept that you need to understand in your journal, and I want you guys to understand what a negative exponent actually is. Okay? Positive exponents help us, help us get to really, really, really big numbers. Negative exponents help us get to really, really, really small numbers. T to the negative 8 by itself means 1 over T to the power of 8. That's what T to the negative 8 actually means. That may not make a whole lot of sense right now, so let's use some numbers. Here's some examples I want you guys to put into your journal. Let's start with the number 5. If I say 5 squared, everybody knows that 5 squared is 25, because it's 5 times 5. But this is where students will mess up. If I say, what's 5 to the negative 2, what do you think students will say where it's not the right answer? Negative. They'll say negative 25, and that will be not the correct answer. This actually means 1 over 5 squared. And the actual answer would be 1 over 25. So whenever you have a negative exponent and you want to make it positive, you're going to have to shift it down. Okay? Alright, so here's an example. What if I had 1 over x to the negative 3? And you're not allowed to have a negative exponent in your answer. And I wanted to make this positive. All you have to do is take that exponent and move it up. Your final answer would be x to the third. So do this example. See if you guys can figure it out. x to the negative 5 over y to the negative 4 and see if you can find out what you think the answer would be. If I gave you this, I said I want you to simplify. By the way, this is not problem number one. However, problem number one had a negative exponent, and I want you to understand how negative exponents work, because you're going to have negative exponents in future problems. No, not yet. This is not the quotient of powers. I just want the simplified answer of this. To simplify this, all you have to do is move the y's up top, and that y to the negative fourth becomes y to the positive fourth. You can move it up. You have x to the fifth in the denominator. This would be the simplified answer because it does not have negative exponents any longer. Okay? Which is good. I'm glad everyone sees that. 
So now we're going to go on to now number two. Holy cow, that's a lot of numbers. So what, right now, going right down, not number two, number three, write down number three in your journal exactly as it appears. All right, in problem number three, we have a whole bunch going on right now. All right, I'm going to highlight something. I'm going to highlight this four and this negative five. And those are coefficients. A coefficient is simply the number that's in front of a variable. All right? You are not going to add the coefficients. You're going to multiply them together. So we have a 4 times a negative 5. That's going to yield us a negative 20. Now I'm going to move over here to the d squared and d to the power, even though you can't see it, that is d to the power of 1. What are we allowed to do with the 2 and the 1? Add them together because that's the part that means d. That's right, d cubed. d cubed. d squared. d is the first. You're allowed to add those exponents together because that is the product of powers. Now I'm going to highlight t to the fifth and t to the negative three. What, how did you do that, Justice? That's correct. What did you do? Just five plus negative three is two. That's right. So five plus negative three is two. But t squared. All right. And then finally, last but not least, we have b to the negative four and b to the negative one. And what does that become? B to the negative two. Now, everybody right here, this is, that's the first part. But we said something about simplifying with exponents and said we're not allowed to have what? Negative, Negative exponents. So everybody, what I want you to do in your journal, please, write this. B to the negative 5 by itself actually simplifies to 1 over B to the 6. So here's your final answer. Negative 20, d cubed, d squared, all over d to the fifth. That's your simplified answer. Notice, we're allowed to have negatives with coefficients, but we're not allowed to have negative exponents. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and go ahead and move down to problem number five. Write that carefully down in your journal, please. All right, what we're going to do right now, everybody, is we're going to focus right now just in the numerator, and we're going to simplify the numerator first, and then we'll worry about the denominator, okay? We have a negative 27, and we have a negative, even though you can't see it, that's a negative 1x. A negative times a negative is going to equal a positive, so we're going to have the number 27 right there. Because technically you're taking a negative 1 and multiplying it to a negative 27. Then I want you to focus on x to the third, or x cubed, all right, and focus on x to the power of 7. What are we allowed to do with both of those exponents? Add them together. So what's that going to leave you with? Isn't that a negative 27? Okay, that, that is a negative 27, but negative 27 times a negative 1 equals a positive 27. So, this is 27, so this is x to the 10. x to the 10, very good. So 27 x to the 10. Underneath it, put a 27 x to the 4. Now, at this point, what I want you to do is look at your table and tell me which property we're going to use for the properties of exponents. So right now, I want you guys to write. The next thing in your journal is you're going to write is the quotient of powers. Now, in your table, it says a to the power of n over a to the power of n is equal to a m minus n. So what are we allowed to do with exponents if you have the same base and they're being divided? You're allowed to simply subtract. So right now, we have 10, we have 4, when you take 10 and you minus 4, what do you get? 6. So you have 27 x to the power of 6 all over a 16. Now let me explain to you something. We cannot simplify this fraction. 
that 27 basically is the same as saying 3 to the power of 3. 16 is 2 to the power of 4. So 16 is made up of what? A bunch of 2's being multiplied together. 27 being made up of a bunch of 3's being multiplied together. 2 never goes into a 3, so therefore you can't simplify. Therefore, this is your final simplified answer. You don't have any negative exponents, all right? And there's no parentheses anymore. Totally simplified. Now we get to a tricky one. So before we do problem 7, go back to the quotient property. We had x to the power of 10 over x to the power of 4. Now this right here, I told you to write out what is x to the power of 10 actually means. This is what it means. x. That's what x to the 10th means. You understand why I don't want it to be x to the 4th? Oh, that'd be awesome. Then we have x to the 4th, which is x being multiplied to itself how many times? Four times. Now, back in the old days, all right, you'd say, hey, these all cancel to a 1. Any number divided by itself is 1. Well, how many x's do you have left being multiplied together? That's why your answer is x to the 6th. But the quick way is just take this and take away this. Put a little more on bottom. bottom. Right, well watch. Here we go, right? If I had x to the 4th over x to the 10th, I'm not going to list it out. Okay? That would literally be 1 over x to the 6th. Well, wait a second. I thought you said you subtracted them. I thought you would say that would be x to the negative 6th. Well, what does x to the negative 6th actually mean, simplified? One over x. Okay. All right. At this point, we have one more problem we're going to do before this video ends. We have less than three minutes to do it. So right now, number seven is our challenge. All right. I want you guys to right now focus on this part right here in blue. And if I run out of time, then I'll just continue this video after. So it'll be like a part A and a part B. And then this part right here we're going to do separately. There's something right here that we have not talked about that we need to talk about. And it deals with the powers of exponents. So right now, look at your table. Right? Look at your table right now. And this one is going to deal with the properties of powers. So right now I want you to label this. Properties. of powers in your journal, okay? Now, I want to make sure you guys understand that this number 4 is very important because this right here is going to be applied to every single number and variable inside of the blue. So I'm going to do 3 halves to the power of 4. I'm going to do d squared to the power of 4. And I'm going to do f to the power of 4, and I'm going to apply that power. So I'm applying this power right here to every single one. That's the first thing I'd like you to do. Now I'm going to go down right here. Right now, 3 to the power of 4, three to the power of four is actually 81, but I'm going to leave it as 3 to the power of 4 over 2 to the power of 4. So this right here becomes 3 to the power of 4 over 2 to the power of 4. d squared raised to the power of 4, this is where you're allowed to simply multiply those together. So we're going to get d to the power of x. That's the next part right there. And then, what are we allowed to do with a power to a power? You're allowed to multiply it. So what do you guys think that's going to become? f to the power of 1. See, 16 is correct. So that's what I would like you guys to put for all of your blue. Alright? Now, we're running out of time on this video, so I'm going to continue this problem on the next two videos.